Hello, and welcome to the Organ Files podcast. First, our disclaimer. We are novice podcasters simply for entertainment. If we misquote or offend, it was not on purpose to do so. We are back at the Roseburg Library, who are gracious enough to let us record from one of their fancy rooms here. And we have another great interview lined up today. But first, my co-host, Elliot Bowman. We actually never left the library. We, we stayed here the last, uh, last four days waiting for uh, our, another, our new guest to arrive. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Right. First of all, a big thank you to Becky, who uh, joined us from the Glide Wildflower Show last episode. Really appreciate her talking to us. If you haven't checked that episode out yet, please do. You can find this anywhere you get your podcast. Mark puts it on YouTube. Uh, also, an Instagram page has like the links to the directories for the podcast. It's the Oregon Files podcast. Mark and I created our own little website, the Oregon Files podcast, which has a bunch of links on there to the episodes and photos. And we just uh, you know appreciate everyone checking all that out. We're pretty easy to find. We don't hide anywhere, so you can uh, you know uh, find us any way you get your podcast. So today we're talking to Joe Ziegler. So it's kind of funny, you know, three years going into this podcast. We have not run out like of like the abundance of like really interesting stories and people to talk to. And like today is just another example of that. Joe comes to us from the, I'm going to say this here, the Roseburg Receiver Douglas County Emergency Communications Scanner. That's the full name of it. Yeah, that's the full name. name. (laughs) And I I know we got some other things to talk about too. So we appreciate you taking your time, sir, uh, at your day and chatting with us about everything. So uh, we'll start off. uh, Education background, uh, work history. Are you from around here? Yeah. So I was born and raised in the in the Roseburg area. I was actually born and raised in the Winston area. I went to Douglas High School from 2000. One to 2005, graduated in 05, and then went to UCC afterward uh, from 2005 to 2008. And then in 2008, I actually transferred from UCC to OIT in Clemmel Falls. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of a, a quite experience because I, I actually started there as a software engineering degree mm-hmm. uh, major. And then about halfway through, I'm like, this is not for me. I don't like to sit at a computer and program all the time. So I changed my major to IT. And then I was doing that for, uh, I'd say, a few terms. And then I'm like, you know what? I like programming. I'm going to go back to software (laughs) engineering. So then I did that another few terms. And then I'm like, nah, this is not for me again. Like I went back to IT. So I was kind of just kind of, I was making up my mind uh, throughout my whole college uh, experience. Makes sense. Yeah. So then... I stuck with IT, graduated, I graduated with a Bachelor's of Science in Information Technology with uh, an emphasis in Applications Development. That nice. was the actual name of the major. <laughs> um, and then right after, or actually right before I graduated, uh, that's when my career took off. Um, that's when I was actually contacted by Google. And the funny thing is that I, I didn't apply anywhere because uh, I, was, I was mainly just looking around, looking for, for you know, what can I do around Clemmel Falls? What can I do in Roseburg? Because I was thinking about moving back to my hometown, my nice. hometown of Roseburg. So I, I really didn't apply anywhere at that time. But then all of a sudden, you know, I updated my LinkedIn, added everything because I, I was working part time at a, at a small company in Clemmel Falls. So I was kind of a, a jack of all trades there, just doing server work, uh, some programming IT support, things of that nature. So I was doing jack of all trades. So I everything that I learned, I I put on LinkedIn. So I updated my resume, put all my experience on there. And then I'd say a few weeks later after I did that, I got this email from Google saying, hey, we have a internal technology residency program, which is a two-year fixed term program for new college graduates. And you have the the whole experience of working there for two years. Heck yeah. Yeah. And you, basically it's it's being there helping all of the internal Google employees with through tickets, going to their desks, traveling the world, actually. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I traveled mm. the world. <laughs> but I when I first got that email, I'm like, this is spam. I was like, going to ask you if you thought it was fake. Yeah, I was like, like yeah. Why, why would Google be contacting right. me, right? Like, <laughs> you can Google something. Google doesn't, Google right. Right. Google doesn't right. look right. for you. Like, that's not right. right. I have a look long, long and hard at that email. <laughs> right. Um, so then I, I replied to the recruiter and I'm like, yeah, heck yeah, I'm, I'm ex- I want to work for Google. Like that would be a, a, a life dream. Like I, I didn't think that I would, I had what it took to 
work at Google just because I, I didn't think I had the experience or I thought I had to go to an, I, an Ivy League college. Or, right. Oh, yeah, because, you, you know, MIT. Yeah, MIT is mm-hmm. something like that, you know. So I said, yeah, let's do it. So then I, I started interviewing for them. It was mostly just on the phone for a little while. Uh, all these really in-depth technical questions. But I learned a lot of that at, at OIT and through experience when I was, you know, while I was working part-time in Klamath huh. Falls. So, yeah, I, I basically knew all the answers to all these questions. And then finally they're like, hey, you made it to like the last round. Do you want to come to our office? And I'm like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Nice. So I, so I went to their office in, in Mountain View, California, which is where they're headquartered, did the last round of... I would say five interviews in a day. So I probably did a roughly 10 interviews at Google. Oh uh, all these, yeah, roughly 10, inter- 10 interviews just full of technical questions. And, you know, I was really nervous at the time, as you could imagine, just writing on a whiteboard and and going, what? yeah, really, like, it's like draw a network and, and you know, explain like how this all works. What? I mean, now, of course, it's, that would be an easy, an easy <laughs> thing. But when at that time yeah. that was, you know, that was 12 years ago, yeah. uh, I know that was kind of getting, I was new into that field. So how nice were the offices? Oh, oh gosh. The offices are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention the free food. <laughs> right. right? Dang. They talk about the, the Google 10, cause they, they say you're going to gain 10 pounds <laughs> when you start <laughs> working <laughs> there. So yeah, so I, I did get the job. Yeah, uh, yeah. I got the job, and awesome. um, yeah, I worked there for two years. I traveled the world, and that includes going to Germany. Uh, I lived in uh, Dublin, Ireland, for three months. I went to Portugal. I went to uh, London, and then there were some places in the U.S. too. Um, there was Kirkland, Washington, um, and then there was um, the. Michigan office and uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. How cool! Yeah, how was the food? I don't know why I said that. <laughs> oh, no, I was yeah. staying in the cafeteria yeah. too. So the, the the cool thing is the food at Google. You can select what you want. So if you're in the mood for something, one of the buildings has it. So if you're in the mood for a barbecue, uh, like barbecue ribs, barbecue chicken, there is a cafe for that. If you're in the mood for sushi, there's another one for That's that. Crazy. If you want like a fast food type, fast food type food, yeah, like hamburgers, hot dogs, things like that. There's a building for that. So there's a building for any type of like food, what do you call it? A, a genre yeah. that you're, that you're in the mood for, for that day. Man. So, uh, I mean, there were some, I, went, I yeah, yeah, never yeah. met anyone that works at Google before. This, yeah. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Wait, how was the food in uh, Dublin? <laughs> Oh, the food, same thing. I mean, they have different types of food. Okay, okay. okay. So, so, so Mountain View, California is their largest campus. That's where like okay, the majority okay. of all the employees yeah. are. And then you have like all the other offices globally. The ones in Dublin, well, there, there's, I think there's a few buildings, but their, their food is then just limited to whatever they have in those two select buildings. Yeah. But okay. Did you go out like eat at Irish pubs? And stuff? Oh yeah, enjoyed all like the yes. local cuisine and. Yeah, I tried to go to as many bars as I could, but <laughs> what I learned is that if if you went to a different pub each day for the whole year, you would not visit all of them. There's That's that true. many pubs <laughs> in Ireland. <laughs> I'm living in the wrong country. Right? <laughs> that is cool, That's man. Awesome. Right. That's cool. So uh, was Google, was everyone pretty cool to work with? Oh, gosh, yeah. yeah. Everybody was super smart. Yeah. Everybody there was amazing, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and that was 12 years ago? 12 years ago. So Man, that was so. from two, 2013 to 2015. Wow. Okay. And then right before that, right before I left Google, that's when we had the option to interview for a full-time permanent position mm-hmm. or move elsewhere. Mm. Uh, so the fixed term program, I was still technically a full time employee, but the only difference was that one, I was fixed term, and two, I didn't get any stock, no equity, so I didn't oh, have yeah. any Google stock. But uh, right before I stopped working at Google, they again they gave me the option to either stay, interview for a full time permanent position, or move elsewhere, and I gave it a lot of thought. And what I managed to what I managed to come up with was that. I want to make more of a more of an impact from myself toward projects that I was working on. I love it. So when I was at Google at that time, they had around I would say 30, 32,000 people. And as you can imagine, when you're working on something, you feel like at least for me, and that could that couldn't be for uh, 
all people there, mm. but I feel like I didn't have much of an impact. Yeah. Mm. So I wanted to go to a smaller company mm. to feel like I, sure. I have a, I've had a, a larger impact at, at mm. that place. That makes sense. Yeah, right. Have your that. hand on a little more. Right, right, right. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's when Uber reached out to me on LinkedIn, <laughs> right? Nice. Yeah. I, to be honest, I have never, every job that I've had in the technical field, I did not apply for. It's good to know. Yeah. It's good to know. Yeah. They, I mean, they good for you, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, That's good, cool, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> man. Yeah. So I, I worked. That's when I started Uber, and that's when they had 5,000 people at the time. That was eight and a half years ago in 2015. Man. And now they're, I would say, I, I think they're around 30,000 people right. now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, but. When I when I was talking about no impact, because I've been there for so long, I've grown with the company. Nice. I pretty much know the company inside and out now. Right. So, and that's where you're at now. That's where I am at yeah. Yeah, right. now. Yeah, but we do have Uber in Roseburg, right? Yes, yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> people are like, "Oh, there's enough drivers," and I totally agree. I wish we, yeah. I wish we can get so many more drivers out there because there's so much demand out there. Yeah, right. Yeah. I love Uber Eats. I get Uber Eats credits, so oh, I, nice. yeah, yeah. So I do because I work there. I get some credits to either ride in an Uber or or get food from the Uber from the Uber Eats platform. It always goes back to food. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we don't have Uber. We don't have Uber here, though, right? We don't have Uber here. No, I thought we had Uber maybe for like a day, right? I, I thought I, I thought had it was like a short. Oh, wait, it was like short lived. Maybe I'm, I'm making that up. I don't know. Oh. Could be wrong. You tell me. I don't know. <laughs> well, to be honest, I've never actually. I've never ridden in an Uber in Roseburg, yeah. but I know that they exist. Oh, they do? Okay, good. Yeah, so if you open up the app, you can request one. Oh, okay. But because the the supply is very low, you may not yeah. get one right, right some away. Some guy at Ford pickup with me, a dog in the back. Right. Seat. Like, how do you, you can, can anyone become an Uber driver? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, but there, there are some requirements. There's yeah. like, you have to have a certain uh, year of vehicle. Oh, okay. And later. Yeah. And then you have to pass a background check, and that's really it. So, so a, a decent vehicle, background check, and there you go. Man, and some patience too. <laughs> and some patience. Yeah. I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> you're driving your own car too. Yeah. Oh boy. But what if you're getting, if you're that. driving all the time though, like if you're in San Francisco, some yeah. people actually rent cars just to drive for Uber. They're oh. not actually using their own car. That's really? Money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. It makes money. Man. <laughs> so. When did you come back to this area? So I moved back to Roseburg in I think that was two years ago. Last uh, last not not last July, but the July before, okay. and that's when I applied during COVID to work remotely. So I, I applied, I got approved. So I was working remotely in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. uh, Antioch, California, which is East Bay. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, okay, well now I'm working remotely. That's nice. I never would have dreamed to be back in the Roseburg area this soon. I, <laughs> I thought, I knew that I was going to come back to retire yeah, yeah. after I was you know, finished <laughs> working. Then the the company was like, hey, we're allowing you to work anywhere in the United States. That's in a approved state. And that's, mm -hmm. I think, because I have tax reasons. But anywhere in the United States that you want with no difference in pay. Mm. And I'm like... Okay, I'm going back to Roseburg then, and that's exactly nice. what I did. So I went back to my go. hometown of Roseburg and I bought a house last August. Congratulations! That's yeah, cool. thank you. Yeah, and that's where I live on the top of a hill uh, in the Hughcrest area. Nice. And uh, you yeah, must be the house. only guy in Roseburg working for Uber. <laughs> I think so. You got. It. I, yeah, I have to <laughs> I think imagine, so. right? Yeah. <laughs> That's so interesting. If there is another Uber employee in Roseburg, right. please let me know. Right? <laughs> right. So, he's going to listen to podcasting. No way. Right. <laughs> yeah. You lived in Antioch? Antioch, California. Yeah. So I was there for, I believe, four years. Yeah. And then before that, I was in Pittsburgh, which is a city right next door. And then before that, I was in the Palo Alto area when okay. I was working yep, for yep. Google. Yeah. My dad lived in a little town called Isleton. Oh, okay. It's kind of right near uh, Antioch. Yes. And Lodi. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He lived on a boat for about 10 years down there, oh, okay. one of the marinas. So I'm a little familiar with the area. A little Very bit. Nice. A nice. Nice little area. So, man, so I, I know where I don't want to like jump ahead too much, but how did, so how did you go from like, I'm working at Uber to like, I want to run a police scanner page. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm sure there was some things in between there. I mean, we can talk about it, but I mean, that's kind of interesting. Right. So I am doing both. Yeah. Work a full time and running yeah. a scanner page. So 
ever since I was 11 years old, I, I've been interested in radio. And that's mm. when I started getting into like CB radio, just, you know, yeah. talking to random truck drivers or, you know, <laughs> taking things apart. Yeah. yeah. My, I have an older cousin who, who he was a, he, he still is. He, he's a, he collects CBs and he, and he fixes them, you know, mm. and, and then he resells them. And I think that's really where I got into radio to begin with. And I, I believe like some of my grandparents were into radio too. I know my, my grandpa, he, actually started the volunteer fire department in Glide. Oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. Oh, nice. Another Glide connection. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my, my mom and her family are from Glide. That's cool. I think he always just listened to the scanner because he was a volunteer fireman. Yeah. Because yeah, he was a, he was a fireman in, in Los Angeles before they moved to okay. Glide. Okay. Yeah. So then he started that volunteer fire, uh, fire department in Glide. Then he started listening to radio. And I think somehow like the radio interest I, I feel like it's in the blood somehow yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. so again like since i was 11 i was i'd been in radio sure and then when i moved back to roseburg i again my house is on a hill and i'm like you know i could pick up everything up here <laughs> <laughs> i i have a ham radio license that i got uh i went i think it was nine years ago yeah so ham radio, if you're not familiar with no, it, it's, it's kind of like what they did before the internet. You know, you talk to any anyone around the world, depending on what kind of radio oh, and cool. power and license that you have. The license that I have is more line of sight. So it's more, I put my radio at something, I can talk to it. Or if I use like a repeater, if you know what a repeater is, like if you see a lot of these antennas on top of the hill, they bounce your signal from one repeater to the next. So you could technically talk to anyone around the country if the oh, right. repeaters are talking to each other. Oh, that's yeah. wild. Yeah. You have a license to have a ham radio? Yes. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, it's it's all part of the FCC. There's three different licenses. There's the tech license, the general license, and the extra license. And each license has their own requirements of what bands you can talk to so, or what frequencies you can talk on. That is so interesting. Just, wow. just to have a ham just to have a ham radio. Yeah, just to have a ham radio license. And so like my my license, again, line of sight, but I can talk to some 10, in this case, I call it a 10 meter band because it is a 10 meter band where I can talk to anyone around the world if I have a high power radio and I have the right antenna uh, and I'm pushing out enough power. And I can also talk to the International, International Space Station I, there's something else called moon bounce. If you point your antenna at the moon and somebody in like Russia or somewhere somewhere else around the world is pointing at the same location of the moon. What? You can talk to them that way. Okay. I feel like it's like a sci-fi movie plot. And I love it so much. This is, how do you, okay. Man, this is like a dumb question, but like, how do you even like tune it to like know who to even to talk to? I mean, well, like, I want to talk to somebody in like, you know, Florida. How do I... You know, know that somebody's going to pick up on the other side of the yeah, country. Yeah, that's that's the thing. That's that's the fun of it. You're, you're basically when you're broadcasting on the radio, you're kind of just scanning through frequencies that you're allowed to talk on, and you're and then you just call CQ CQ CQ, which means I'm 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 calling out, mm -hmm. calling out my call sign, wanting to talk to somebody. So if somebody on the other end can hear you, they just reply. And if you're if you're using the the ten meter band, you're radio waves actually bounce off in the Earth's ionosphere, and that's how the, the signal travels. So instead of like going through line of sight, you're actually traveling through the Earth's atmosphere where your signal can go further distances. My brain is full. Oh, dude. I, Just so our listeners know. Again, <laughs> like, it's, again, it's before the internet. I mean, people, is... it's getting more popular again today. Oh, yeah? Because it's it's more like, I have this radio, I have this much power, this thing right now can can allow me to talk to anyone around the world without the use of a phone, right. the internet. And that's actually great because it's used for emergency communications too. Like, right. like Hurricane Katrina, hmm. they didn't have internet, they didn't have phone. The only way they could get food to their location was through ham radio. Right. So if something happened in Roseburg, for example, you I'm could, the guy that you're going to want to talk to. Say, you, you prepping, <laughs> you prepping for the end of the world. That's what you right. do. <laughs> Man, that, that is so interesting. And, so if you don't okay, so if you don't have a license, so is the FCC really gonna be show up? Be like, let me see your license, Joe. Well, yeah. If you just say hello and that's it, like to give away, it, it, no one's gonna. I mean, not gonna right. find you, right? But if they did find you, I believe it's a felony if you if you get caught. Yes. Could so you imagine like, going to prison because you have a ham radio license? What if I have a ham and eggs radio? <laughs> 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 Man, so you're like tuning, tuning, tuning different frequencies and just calling out to see like who, who's there. Who's right? What if two people answer at the same time? 
Uh, you can kind of hear it. You can kind of hear like some some buzzing sound. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe not for the person receiving, but if well, let's say that I'm talking and somebody else is talking at the same time, mm -hmm. I won't be able to hear that. Okay. But if somebody else is listening to both of us talk at the same time, they can hear this buzzing sound. Oh, interesting. Kind of like this in the scanner. If you listen to two people talking to the mm -hmm. to fire dispatch, for example, at the same time, you'll hear like the buzzing sound because mm -hmm. like they're walking over each other. Interesting. Yeah. How often do you do like? reach out to like people from across the globe oh i right now i haven't yeah, <laughs> yeah. i'm right now like with radio that i have right now is it's more line of sight through peters mm -hmm. uh but i just bought a well it's new to me but it's from the 1970s it's a, a kenwood this one will allow me to go anywhere on the world oh, uh, man so. that's probably so much fun oh yes yeah, yeah like, learn all different languages. No, oh, yeah. It, well, speaking of languages, like Morse code is something that you can also use with the radio too, mm. and that even goes further because I mean, it's just oh, deep, yeah. deep, deep. You know, you're talking Morse code right. instead of through voice. It can hear that. You can hear that even further. That you can put out a lot more power too. Huh. But I don't know Morse code, so it's yeah. you know that's another thing that I have to learn as well. That's, I mean, that's interesting. Do, do you have do you have kids at home? Yes, I have yeah. two kids. Are, are they of age to like be interested in like- No, about, no, like, not right now. My, my kids are uh, almost six and almost three. So okay. <laughs> they're really young still. Yeah. So that'd be, that'd be kind of fun too, to grow up like with, you know, that type of uh, hobby. Oh yeah. You know, it's an expensive kind of, hobby, but right, it's a, right. but it's, it's a great hobby. And right. kids, kids, really young kids are, are uh, getting into that hobby as well. Cause yeah. you can get a, a ham radio license at gosh i think i've seen like nine years old and you know i don't think there really is an, an age limit hmm. as long That's as you can cool. pass the tests you ever seen the movie contact yes oh, yeah. it reminds me of that love, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. Reaches up or frequency have you seen that yeah. yeah it's a good one yeah. too uh I, I don't even know what my next question is it's just why start the douglas county thing yeah yeah right yeah. right yeah. so good question right so because <laughs> i could pick up these radio waves really clear where i live mm -hmm. I wanted to share that with the community mm. rather than just keeping it to myself. Cause I had a scanner. Okay. I, was, I was like, wow, this yeah. is really clear. Like, yeah. wow. So I, that's where I started putting it on the internet and I created the main feed. And then I started just separating it into separate feeds. And mm. rather than just having a main feed that scans 10, 15, 20 frequencies, now I'm giving the option to people of what they want to hear. So right. like there's a sub dedicated frequency for law one, law two, fire dispatch. So, you know, hmm. if there's something happening on the fire dispatch channel, they don't want to listen to all the other noise on law one, law two. They, they have the option to choose oh, what to listen to. Right. So you put the frequencies out there for people to listen to? Right. So really it's, I have two main scanners mm -hmm. and then I have these little USB dongles. Mm -hmm. and I do a, a lot of the work. I have a little Raspberry Pi, which is a mini computer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and the, everything is really just hooked up to that. Interesting. It's hooked, it's hooked up to the internet and then mm -hmm. there's a site called Broadcastify, broadcastify.com, yeah. yeah. and that's yep. where every all the frequencies live. But what makes me really unique is that, you know, I'm in tech, as you already know now, a lot of my a lot of my platform is automated. It uses different platforms as well. So my frequencies are not just on Broadcastify, but I have direct fees as well. And direct meaning not only am I going to Broadcastify, but I'm actually allowing these, like the Raspberry Pi itself and the radios to connect to my own servers on the internet. And then people can connect to that server directly yeah. without the use of a third party, such as Broadcastify. And when they do that, there's little to no delay. Whereas Broadcastify, I've seen it up to like four minutes. And sometimes if you want to listen to something, especially with, for first responders, yeah. if they're listening, four minutes is a long time during an emergency. And so I want it to be a, a resource to allow them to listen to radio without the, the delay. Yeah, yeah. So what I discovered talking to volunteer firemen is that they don't, sometimes they're not giving a, they're not given a radio. They have an app on their phone and their app on their phone directs them to the scanner feed. But again, that's the Broadcastify scanner feed that's yeah. four minutes delayed. Yeah. So instead of them doing that, I want to be the resource where they can connect to my direct feeds where there's little to no delay and they can hear the, the feed mm -hmm. right when it's being broadcasted. That's wild. Interesting. Yeah. We want to call out here. You just crossed how many? members today or how many? Uh, 6,500. 6,500. Yeah. So it's, we're still pretty, I call that small, but we've uh, only been around for, I think it's seven, eight months. So yeah. we're getting roughly wow. six to a thousand, a lot. 600 to a thousand members per month. When did you realize it was a thing that people were like, oh, this is amazing. And you started getting feedback. 
when I first started the group, people were like, wow, like this, this feed is really clear. You guys are really professional. Mm -hmm. The content is good. That's when we started getting more people. And what I discovered is that, you know, the, the good quality content people are sharing, that's where it's like word of mouth. People are seeing these shared posts on other people's, yeah, on, on, yeah. The, on their friends's feed, for example, and that's when we're getting all these members. Yeah. And then we're also sharing our content with other groups too that also have thousands of people. I'm also like partnered with other scanner groups too. There's the Douglas County, Oregon Live scanner group and the Douglas County, Oregon scanner, EMS, fire and police yep. scanner group. And I'm more partnered with them as well. I started, I, meet, I met them right when I started my feed, at least the Douglas County, Oregon Live one. one the other one, the Douglas County, Oregon Scanner EMS group. I knew the owners since I was younger. Oh, so, cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's many different scanner groups in Douglas County, yeah. which is what yeah. I what I discovered when I first started. I didn't know right away right before I right before I started though. Southern uh, Oregon Scanner. I think that's one that I look at sometimes. I'm I follow them all. Yeah. I, I honestly had no I had no idea. So, and you have a moderator on there too. It looks like she may help kind of filter out some things. Yeah. So I, I think I have, how many do I have now? Five or six staff now, because I can't, as you may know, I work full time. I can't post right. all day. Right. So I have to have staff that will allow, that will listen to the scanner and post information that is heard. Now we don't post everything. We don't post like someone's having a stroke or heart attack because right. as you being may know, respectful. like, they're, they're, yeah, it's being respectful. It happens quite a bit actually too. And so we, we don't post things of that nature but when it comes to like fires car accidents uh, police pursuits things of that nature then that's right. that's posted almost kind of like danger to the public sort danger of thing. to the right. public exactly right. exactly if there's a you know road hazard car right. block on the roadway sure things things of not that bigfoot mean. sightings <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> And any Bigfoot stories from around the world? Not that, no, I have not, nothing. Not, 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 nothing that I have heard. You can, it's a safe place, Joe. You can tell us, man. <laughs> any paranormal You've been to a lot of country. <laughs> hey, any paranormal stories? Any ghost yeah. stories from around the world? <laughs> yeah. Anything good? Well, if you, if you want to talk about like, well, it's not really ghost stories, but if you've heard of like number stations. No. No. You Please haven't. We're ready. Please. I'm Dive in. It's, this is related to ham radio. Okay. So, so like if you listen to... I don't know if you can listen to them from Roseburg. I haven't heard any, but if you listen to like ham radio frequencies from other countries, you'll hear like actually have you have you seen Lost? Yes. Okay. So like the the numbers that that lady repeats, you know, I don't remember the yeah. numbers. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but that's a number station. And but those are real. There are stations out there that just randomly repeat numbers over and over on repeat, and no one knows why. What in the world? Yeah. And there's also something called the Russian buzzer. If you've, oh, if you've heard of no. that, you want to Google that. But there's, there's, <laughs> you want to Google that. <laughs> but it's basically, it's just a constant eh, eh, all day long. No one knows why it's there. And it's been happening for for decades. And people that's that people think it's a number station. It's some type of government. Why in the world? The number station is like a Morse code thing? It's not really Morse code. No, it's just you'll hear a lady or, or I think it's mostly yeah, yeah. mostly women who just... It's a it's a computerized voice, and it's just what five, in the heck two nine. And you can zero. listen anytime you want. Yeah, it's just on repeat on the same frequency usually, or sometimes it's just on a certain frequency at a certain time of the day. There's actually a website that posts when the numbers will be posted at that time, so you can go tune to that frequency at that time, and then the it'll it's exact. Like it'll it'll start reading them off. And then it stops. Lottery and then... tickets. It's got to be lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if anyone's tried it's that. Like codes for spies. I mean, there's. It's got to be. Oh, what do you think it is? What I don't. I think it. I think it is something government related. I think it is. I... You think the number is like a code or something? It's how they communicate. It's got to be. You know what I mean? They got like little books or something like that. They get the numbers. You think it's day? United States? Like U.S. Like in... oh, about that. I don't know about that. Smart. <laughs> they're just gonna but, ham radio license to anybody nine-year-olds i hear <laughs> have, 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 but okay so you do guys i i completely respect you not saying everything that you guys hear and that kind of thing because you're right there's very sensitive it, situations yeah sometimes they have names or you know age of children i i try to keep that stuff off the Good. off the off the page mm -hmm. just i know they say it on the radio so technically it is public mm -hmm. but i don't want to 
I don't want people to learn about things over social media. So mm-hmm. that's so I want these people jump on those posts. I, oh yeah. I mean, I'm I'm one of those people. I mean, I don't I don't post because I I you know I'm a responsible adult. But <laughs> well, I you're love... a public figure. That's why. Just like <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but but it's just it's crazy how fast you post something. How many people? Oh, oh yes. God. Comment or yes. Uh, speculation. Yes. And right, I just right. these things. I I because I'll wake Snowball. up at four o'clock in the morning to take the dogs out to the restaurant. I'll check. I'll check to see what's going on. <laughs> right. And it's just like 43 comments on a high speed pursuit. You know what I mean? It's like holy at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> And, and, I'm not posting at three o'clock in the morning. By the way, yeah. I'm sleeping. <laughs> okay, 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 you must not sleep because there, yet, right. all day. There are, I mean, there are some scanner groups that do stay up all night long, okay. listening to this to the feed, and I respect that. They, you know, hard workers. Yeah. But for me, I feel like if I post something about something important, when people are waking up at seven in the morning, yeah. and then I'm like, "Hey, three hours ago, this happened." Yeah, I feel like that's fine. We posted it. People can follow it and and comment on it, but again, three o'clock in the morning, I'm asleep. Okay, yeah. Right. Some yeah. of these though, I I didn't even remember. Is this the one? Okay, my favorite one the other day. I don't know where I, it was. The person that was called about they were they were licking cars at Evergreen. <laughs> Family <laughs> medicine. What? Like and then there was a correction. I was like, sorry, sorry, spell check correction. Not licking. They were kicking cars. So. Oh. <laughs> but then someone made a comment. It goes either way. It's a mental issue. And I'm like going. <laughs> oh man. Well, yeah. This uh, Roseburg has eight combative females. Oh, Roseburg eight has a combative female. Wait. Roseburg eight. Yeah. It says Roseburg eight. Uh, is that the Roseburg? Motel 8 or Roseburg? It just says Roseburg Oh, 8. I took that as like eight different combative females. <laughs> oh. She Did took off in police? cuffs. He gained control. She's on the ground now, refuses. That was four hours It must ago. be must, must be police, right? Roseburg yeah, 8. Yeah, Roseburg 8, okay. probably. I don't even know. I don't it doesn't know. just wow. <laughs> Besides this this page, what other groups are you involved with? Yes. So are you, are you referring to other scanner groups or? Yeah, your scanner groups or even other. You started another big one. Right. So there's the two other scanner groups that I'm yeah. partnered with, and I, I'm staffed for both of them. So I'll staff for three st- scanner groups. And then I just created another one called the Douglas County Betterment and Volunteer Opportunities. Okay. That's what I was trying to get to. Right. So that is a group that I created for volunteer opportunities around Douglas County. And what I what happened was we were starting to post volunteer opportunities in the Roseburg Receiver Group, but then I'm like, well, wait a minute. Like, I feel like maybe volunteer opportunities don't really belong here because this is more of like for emergency communications, not for volunteer opportunities. And there really wasn't a local or a centralized location for for volunteer opportunities in the area. So wow, this is fantastic. Yeah. So this so that's what I'm like. Let's just create something. I, I created it along with the the other owner of the. The uh, the Douglas County, Oregon scanner. She again. She's the she's the one that I've known since I was younger, and so her and I we started this group together. And then I created a web page uh, for it, which I just launched. So there's nothing really on it right mm-hmm. now. But this is going to be a page where people who want to suggest volunteer opportunities are people who who are putting the volunteer opportunity on. This is where you can suggest that opportunity on the web page and then Good. it'll send me a, a some information about it and then I'll put it on the web page and then everybody can go to this centralized location and view all the opportunities in the area. Man, that is a great idea, man. I, I absolutely love it, man. The Meals on Wheels is on there of Roseburg. I know that's a high demand. Oh, right. Thing. Fantastic. Yeah. I think one of the first ones I saw you post about was that that retirement home. Yes. Yes. Broke my heart. Oh yes. You know, the yeah. Fact, yeah, the two, was the two sides can't agree on it. So they're just like, they turned off the power. They told employees right. you can't work there anymore. But right. It's like 30 elderly people there. Right. So all the the community now having to gather around the yes. 50 people, oh, it's just mm. wild. But I, I'm so proud of the community though, because they all got together. People are donating food. Yeah. People right. are volunteering their time to, right. to help these people. So right. I'm, I'm really happy about that. Yeah. It's great. Community yeah. uh, band together. Yeah. Yeah. So future plans, anything else you got in sight that you want to oh, gosh, create? With, yeah, with these groups, I really hope the scanner group continues to take off. I really want to help with radio communications when it comes to first responders in any way that I can. I have some ideas in my head, but if they become a reality, I don't know yet. Mm-hmm. As far as other future plans, like I, I really wish Roseburg can become a central hub for technology. And I know some other people who work in tech here as well. And I, I feel like there isn't enough tech here for for younger people. I, I, I feel like when I say younger people, I mean 
students, I yeah. feel like if once once students learn something at UCC, they they go off and and they move to somewhere somewhere else, Eugene mm -hmm. or OIT. further up north, OIT. You know, so I feel like Roseburg can be a another tech hub mm. where they don't necessarily have to leave; they can mm -hmm. stay here and they can work remotely or yeah. or. Mm -hmm. whatever the case may be mm -hmm. but I, I really wish i could i could i could provide a resource i could be that resource when it comes to like kickstarting their career or what to learn in order to get to this x job like i really want to provide like be a mentor for, sure. for other students out there who are interested in technology and yeah, ryan Tilly was thinking about that too when we interviewed him yeah like, there's no reason to, to lose all of our young people or exactly right exactly what yeah. he said yeah well, if people want to get a hold of you for any for that sort of reason, what's kind of the best way to get a hold of you? For yeah, so there's there's Facebook. So if you mm -hmm. just search for Joseph Ziegler, or uh, I my email Joseph at JosephZiegler dot com. So of I have my course. domain. Yeah. domain. Listen, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, work at Google will get you on domain. <laughs> <laughs> makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Do you have any other hobbies or interests outside yeah. of uh, doing the Facebook groups? Let's see. I love the outdoors. Mm -hmm. So good spot. Yeah. Oh yeah. gosh. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Except for the poison oak. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I love the outdoors when I'm not uh, working or or doing the the scanner radio or doing technical related things. My house you know, has has a lot of property, so I'm always outside in the during the spring and summertime mowing the lawn mm -hmm. and doing yard related things. Yeah. Uh, other than that. Um, I love the bowl. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> Although it's been some time since I've done it. Love road trips. Love driving. Oh, well, you're still a pretty busy schedule. <laughs> yeah, sounds so, yeah, good. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I mean, other than that, I have my wife, my kids. Yeah. Get busy, full time man. job. We get you know, it. I even have my LLC too. I, I have a I have a small you know, IT business too. So it hasn't really you been got... kicking off as much as I I would like it to. Mm. But that's just because I'm busy with my other yeah, stuff yeah. too. So. Got your hands full. Right. Have you ever been to the Glide Wildflower Show? I don't think so. No, we haven't either. Oh, okay. I think we're gonna go with. Yeah. I want to plug it in again. It's yeah. April twenty seventh and twenty eighth. I think we're gonna go check it out. Very nice. So I, I gotta ask a question because it's one of the things I see a lot on this. As sadly as um the fentanyl. It, oh, huh. You know, so you know, guys, and I don't. I mean, of course, don't want to get political here. That kind of thing. But I mean, you you hear that a lot, huh? Yes, yes. I think every week it's someone's ODing, and it's really sad. Yeah. I I'm seeing it a lot more now. Uh, I when I moved away ten years ago, it's not something that was that was really s seen. So I feel like in the last ten years, mm -hmm. things have changed in Roseburg. What what's Mac. what surprised you most about the police scanner? Then what's is there anything that's blown you away the most? <laughs> I think it's the amount of scanner groups there are. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a good answer. I, I, yeah. I think like what I've noticed is that other counties around Oregon, like you don't. Usually they have like one scanner group, like Jackson County, they have just one scanner yeah. group. They have like, I think they just met 90,000 members. I'm part of that group as well. Okay. <laughs> but my gosh, like, yeah, Douglas County, there's, I think there's four or five main large ones, mm -hmm. including mine. And why that is, I don't know. I, I right. think maybe it's just, maybe they, there were some disagreements between the different staff and then they just kind of branched off into their own thing, which I totally get because... I know that I'm a member of three, but those the staff <clears throat> for all three scanner groups, like they work their butt off. I know they they work hard to providing accurate information uh, as best they can, and you know, listening to the scanner and posting all the information. It sounds really easy, but it's not because there's stuff going on all the time. Yeah. And again, it's something that I can't post all day because I'm working all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's if pe more people want to become staff from my group, great, because there's more people posting. And I encourage the the community to post too. It's not just the staff, but the staff kind of just, they moderate the stuff, making sure like the names and, you know, since uh, personal information isn't posted yeah. in the group, things of that nature. But do the staff have their own radio too? Like they're- No, 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 it's just, again, it's, it's my radio is just broadcasting over the internet. So those staff just, they get on the internet on their computer, headphones or just yeah. through mm -hmm. speaker and just listen to my feed through mm -hmm. YouTube or Broadcastify or the direct feeds or. What would it take to broadcast the space? Broadcast. No, no, like a, like a radio, like how do you, like, uh, like how, how do we like frequency the, like the space? Like how do, like what type of frequency is that? Like NASA uses. If you tune to NASA's frequency, yeah. technically you could. Yeah. Like, I, they, or it's like these NASA launch frequencies. There's anything government, military. Uh, I think there's a tsunami alert frequency. 
there's anything that you could think of, like even like the like the buses that trawl around town, anything that uses a radio, technically I can hear. Uh, it's just I don't I don't put it all on the on right. the air because either it's not allowed or or you know they they have personal information, so I don't I don't broadcast those. But then we tune into NASA. <laughs> you could see what they're doing. I wouldn't want. See, I, I wouldn't because I wouldn't want to hear something. I don't want to. I <laughs> that's to know. True. And the next thing you know, they're showing up your house, the men in black, <laughs> asking you what you heard. See what Elon's up to. There is an. There is the International is. Space Station yeah. frequency too. And so if they are flying above your house, and they're talking at that exact time, you could technically hear them. But could you could you communicate with them? Like, oh yeah, yeah. But usually they don't reply because. <laughs> They're the NASA space. Well, you know, of course, the space. yeah. They like, there's do. Joe right, down they have thing. things to do up there. Right. Usually they only reply, like, I think it's during certain events. I know, okay. like, sometimes schools want to reach them. Or if they're just, if they're bored. I, oh, so yeah. if you're if you're lucky, they will reply. I wonder how many people actually try to, like, Oh, absolutely. Oh, I'm it's sure it's all right the time. You think so? Oh, yeah. They probably turn, They probably have it on mute. Yeah. There's also something they broadcast called SSTV, if mm -hmm. you've ever heard of that, oh, which yeah. is picture over yeah. radio. Yes, I've seen that. So... The NASA, they, the space station actually broadcast this SSTV image over and over and over on repeat. And if you can pick it up, I believe it's just, it's a picture of the space station That's with amazing. their call sign. I love it. I still can't get over the numbers thing. <laughs> the number stations, yes. It's so weird. It's <laughs> so crazy. I've, yeah, it's. But it makes sense if you're going to try to like be all sneaky in the government. I mean, you're not going to put it in email, cell phones. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Who's really going to be like listening to this radio frequency? Right. I, I would know. start my own number station, just make up the number. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was like. Is it somebody trolling? You know, Is yeah. it just somebody yeah. messing with? Yeah. There's probably somebody doing it just to make people paranoid. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We're going to do this for 40 years right. just to make people confused. Just, just because. Right. You know? <laughs> right. So out of all the things, all your experiences, all the places you've been, jobs you work, to where you are now, if you could give your younger self advice, what would you kind of give your... Because I'm going to be honest, I, I didn't think you worked for Google and all that. I'm like, right, oh, he's, right, got, a, he's, right. he's right. got a police scanner page. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, I didn't realize, I, I mean, we're seeing you. <laughs> right. I, I really interesting think Interesting guy, man. I think it's just telling myself, never doubt yourself because mm. anything is possible no matter where you're from. If you're from the Roseburg area, that's great because I've achieved the, and in my mind, the impossible. And when I say impossible, I mean like never did I think I would, could be working at Google from a resident of the Roseburg area or work, working at Uber from Roseburg. Right. Like I never would have dreamed of working at these companies coming from a small town, right. but I've shown that that's not true. You can achieve anything. I like to, like, I like to, I like to quote the back to the future. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. So it was very movie. Respect. Right. Yeah. It's well, great. shoot, speaking Good of that, movie. what's your favorite movie of all time? Oh gosh. <laughs> Apollo 13. That's a good, good one, man. Oh, mate, Tom Hanks. <laughs> yes, one, yes. Man. Right. Gary Talk, we're talking about number stations and, yeah. and NASA. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great movie. That's a good one. If you can invite three people over for dinner, dead or alive, who would they be? Yeah. So I think the first one would be Jim Carrey because okay. I love a, a, mm. I love a comedian. Yep. I love humor. Yeah. Yeah. Second person would probably be Vince Cerf, if you know who that is. He is a person who invented. TCP IP or IPv4, he's the reason why we have networking. Okay. So if we didn't have networking right now, there would be, I would, in my guess, be no internet, right? Mm -hmm. And then, wow. yeah. And the third person, oh gosh, Warren Buffett, I would say. Shoot, why not, right? I, I would say like, he knows how to manage his money. I want right. I want some tips from him. Sure. Right? So, sure. Okay. Right. Have you ever seen that old video? I think it's like the Today Show or Good Morning America when they're kind of like making fun of the internet. And it's like 1980 something. <laughs> they're like, this internet, you know? It's like, and then like 20 years later, and then everyone's on their phones looking at the internet. It's such oh, yeah. a great video. Oh, There's yeah. like mocking the internet. Yeah. Like, and then the internet's mocking that one. And then favorite sandwich, sir. Favorite sandwich. I think the favorite sandwich would be a sandwich with all the fixings. So I'm saying white bread with... Any type of meat, really, so Bring it on. turkey or sure. or a little, ham, a with pastrami. lettuce, tomato, onions, sprouts, Beautiful. mustard. Yeah. Like it has to be like just oh this juicy gosh. thing. Oh my god! Yes, everything. That's the one you just a little eat in private by yourself. Yes, so yes, take exactly. Time. Nobody bother me. I mean no one bother me. I need to eat. Turn that scanner and radio yes, off. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> man. Oh man. 
So uh, if again, if people want to get a hold of you, or if people want to contact you for either volunteer work or through yes. uh, anything that you have going on, would you mind plugging away? What's the best way to get? Yes, hold of you again? so you can contact me at joseph at josephziggler dot com, or there's uh, Facebook facebook dot com slash joseph ziggler. Beautiful, very yeah. nice, man. Hey, thank you so much for coming. Yes, thank this. you. This is great. Yes, I knew you were gonna be interesting. Yes. I just like, oh man, I really want to interview <laughs> yeah, this guy. I, <laughs> I had. I mean, it was awesome, man. I really, really appreciate Joe. Yes, you coming down here and and hanging out. It hasn't even been an hour. <laughs> Nailed it out uh, again for Mark and I. Uh, if you want to get a hold of our show, it's Oregon Files Podcast Yahoo dot com. Check us out anywhere you get your podcasts. Anywhere. Also on Instagram, it's Oregon Files Podcast. We're free. And again, we just appreciate you know everyone uh, listening, and hope you guys enjoy this one too. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>